shootout week, aka the greatest week of the year. And notice I said week, not just the races. Now, the big boat races are always the weekend before Labor Day every year. But what some of you may not know is that it is a week's worth of festivities. And I thought, because I talk about the shootouts and hold it in such high regard all the time, there was nothing more for me to do than to share that week with you. So I'm going to take you along for the entire week of the Lake of the Ozark shootout, starting with the weekend before, which is the mini shootout, take you through the week where there is a bunch of events, the ones that I attend, that then leads us to the actual races on the Saturday and Sunday, the weekend before Labor Day. And I'll let you get a taste of what this week is like and what makes it so magical and amazing. And in my opinion, the greatest week of the year. Let's go check it out. Shootout week starts right here at Haha ha Tonka yeah, State boy. Park hey, down here in the cove. And as you can see, you can get here by land or as you can see the boats out on the water, you can do this by boat either way. And as you can also see, it's far less busy than what you will see next weekend at the big boat shootout. This is the mini shootout. This is the kickoff of the shootout week, the weekend before the big boats. So let me go give you a little taste of what this is like. And by taste, I mean, you've never seen RC remote control boats like these. The fastest speed last year was 119 miles an hour. And they're out here today and tomorrow trying to break that top speed, getting over 120 miles an hour. This is a lot of fun. This is a great way to kick off the best week of the summer and maybe even the year, if you believe so. Let's go check it out. Welcome to the mini shootout where, as you can see, the fastest boat last year was 119 miles an hour. And this is a great taste of what it's like doing this by land. So if you go by car, you can't actually park down here uh, in this area of Haha ha Tonka. You actually have to park up the street where you get shuttled down to where obviously you can interact with the owners and the drivers of these boats. And if you've never been around RC boats like this, the size of these boats are way bigger than you probably imagine. If you've been around this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is such a neat experience just to get up close and personal with these boats, very similar to what you get to do on Wednesday night. And of course, the racing is something that you just don't get to see every day. Boats going anywhere from usually 40, 50 miles an hour all the way up over 100 miles an hour. You do commonly see crashes, which is why you see D&B docks out there retrieving these boats. If you do go to this, there's a lot of lag time because they put the boats in the water. Sometimes they'll just make one pass and then the boat will crash, which is pretty actually cool to see. Uh, but unlike any other day where you go out in your cove and you really just hang out, drink, do whatever it is you do, uh, this is a unique experience to go over to Hatanka, which is a great place to cove and actually get to watch stuff and watch these cool boats. It's an incredible time. I highly recommend it. And it's just all day long, just people walking out there, putting their boats in the water. They're, they're announcing the speeds. Uh, it's something, again, that I highly recommend if you've never been to. And there you go, there is a boat crash. I zoomed in on that one. That, my friends, is the mini shootout. Just arrived at the street party. It's Wednesday night of shootout week. As you can see here, it took an hour to get there from HH. There was traffic coming from all directions. You don't wanna watch me talk, so let me just show you what we're about to encounter. And one could argue the best night of the shootout. Let's go. Much of this requires my voiceover, but I'm going to go ahead and walk you through some of this because this is exactly what you get to experience up close and personal. Now, I started this uh, my night down by the dam and then worked my way up. Technically, it starts on the other end of the dam, but you can go either way. And this is what you get. It, I, I'm only giving you a small taste of what it actually is and the amount of boats that are up, uh, basically up for display. Uh, there's vendors as far as the eye can see 
and just boats upon boats and upon boats. And, and most of the boats have the crews, the owners, and these people are all right there for you to have conversations with. Uh, it's it's such a cool thing. You get you get uh, companies like Waves and Wheels who have uh, their their displaying their sound system on a pontoon boat, and it's incredible. You've got music blaring uh, from a lot of different angles. Uh, there's, there was I, from what I heard, over eleven thousand people came, and of course you get to get up and pl close and personal with the king of the shootout, which is American Ethanol. Uh, I actually saw some people interviewing uh, the the driver, the pilot of the boat. Uh, it's it's really really awesome and of course I did get my drone up in the air as you can see here this is a great visual of, of what it consists of and this runs until from about five o'clock until about ten o'clock now my recommendation is to get there early uh, if I when I do this again next year uh, we will plan on arriving probably before five o'clock because as you noticed when I uh, when we arrived uh, it took an hour just to get up HH about halfway up HH to the strip. So recommend you get there early and enjoy. Thursday night, Performance Boat Center, check in for the, for the poker run. This was my first time attending the poker run pre-party, the check-in party. And I tell you what, it was uh, more than I imagined. It was packed. Uh, they did have beer vendors, drink vendors, they had food. Uh, there were boats parked almost, it seemed like, on top of boats. It was so packed. It was cool to see. I heard there was even boats that had to tie up to rose bushes and bushes because there was nowhere to park. Uh, and so just just getting there to witness this and the, the, again there was a, a bunch of boats obviously performance boats that were on display there was a lot of people a lot of people to talk to a lot of boats to look at in the docks again highly recommended if you've never been that's thursday night before the shootout go check out the poker run pre-party even if you're not participating in the poker run today is friday of shootout week it is poker run friday and i'm about ready to head out on that boat we're starting at cave, bouncing around the lake, and I'm here to document it for you. So let's go. Poker Run Friday, and wow, what an experience this turned out to be. I had the pleasure of uh, getting to tag along with the uh, Lakefront Living Crew and Iguana, Iguana Marine, and in uh, their center council. It was a beautiful boat. Picked us up from uh, the Lakefront Living offices, and off we went. Started at the cave. I have to tell you that, you know, I've always said that the Wednesday night street party is the best event of the week. This might beat it. And I'll tell you when, when we took off from this poker run, so you get all these boats, hundreds of boats that are going to go out for the day and they've, they've got it well organized and they got in stages. As you're sitting there waiting, ready to go out, which you'll see in this video, that moment that your group takes off man what a rush uh, it was such an awesome experience and as you can see from these these videos these just this is just a who's who of who's got a bigger better faster boat uh, and i'll be honest with you i kind of enjoyed just being a passenger and getting to enjoy it and and so it's a poker run a poker run means you you go to the, the locations that participate you collect uh, you collect poker chips, and then at the end of the day, whoever's got the best poker hand wins prizes. Uh, so it's it's kind of a just a fun excuse, fun way to get out on the water. Uh, you're not really doing anything for, uh, it's all for charity. So it's, it's not like you're winning money or anything like that. It's just uh, to have a good time, a good excuse to get out uh, and go boat. And we started uh, going up to the Red Fox on the 50 mile markers. First time I had actually gone to the Red Fox. So that was a, that was cool. As you can see from those pictures, very small place. Then this happened. Uh, we got a helicopter pull up next to us. I just, you know, of course it's me. I had my, my hands on the trigger, so to speak with the camera. I uh, just happened to be sitting next to the captain in our center council and, uh, videoed and he was videoing me. I, the guy found me, sent me the video. And you can see me there in the boat videoing back. From there, we headed over to uh, Naughty Fish. And as you can see from the speedometer there, we're, man, when he had it opened up, it was uh, about 60 miles an hour, a little over 60 miles an hour. Uh, so we went to Naughty Fish, 
stopped there went from naughty fish over to captain ron's from captain ron's we got to see the, that vw boat on the water we went uh, from there to frankie and louis where we uh, met an old bartender friend where he made us a drink and then ended the day at shorty pants which was the final check-in uh, it's where you would turn in your chips, get your cards, see if you want anything. And later that night, they're going to have an, an, a live auction uh, where they raise a ton of money for charity. Just an incredible day. It is in the 5 a.m. hour on Saturday, race day. The sun's not even out yet, as you can see. And we are getting ready to head over to the races and get a hopefully great spot on the front line. We'll head over in the six o'clock hour. And as I have continued to do the entire week, we will document it and show it to you and bring it to you. So let's get this boat uncovered and let's go have ourselves a hell of a day. The day has arrived. It is the shootout with the big boats. And we headed out in the 6 a.m. hour, which actually turned out to be uh, just about right. Uh, it was not nearly as packed as if you head in the 7 o'clock hour, which allowed us to get great positioning. Uh, so as you can see, when we pulled in, it wasn't uh, super chaotic. We got tied up. Uh, we ended up being all the way at the finish line, which was our goal typically. Uh, we're camped out near the start line, so being at the finish line was pretty uh, pretty neat experience because you're getting to see these boats at full throttle. And of course, as you probably already know, the day was a little chaotic. Uh, the morning was, was nice. Uh, it was good weather until the bad weather hit. We did get to see some uh, plenty of boats run, including the one American ethanol run for the day. As all of you probably know, it ran... 221 miles an hour setting its own record on the three quarter mile track uh, so that was awesome and then uh, shortly after american ethanol ran which you get to hear uh the actual i left the sound on for this because you just you gotta listen to it but shortly after american ethanol ran uh storm starts rolling you can see the storms were going to roll in and it got real bad and uh, they basically told everybody to get the hell out of there because they were expecting 50 mile an hour wind. So that was an experience, uh, not for the faint of heart if you're a boater. Uh, got pelted with rain driving back to our condo. And then we went back, took a little three hour, three or four hour hiatus and the races came back on in the afternoon. And so we headed right back out and as you will see, uh, so did a lot of other people. Now, was it quite as chaotic as as the, the normal Saturday or the morning? No, I think some people stayed home, but we still got to see the likes of Dirty Duck and the Yahoo boat and pretty much uh, all of the cockpit boats that were there were out running uh, in the afternoon on uh, Saturday. So we'd still got to experience uh, a good portion of the shootout uh, yeah, we lost a few hours, but man, they made the most of it. And as you can see here, I even set up my camera on a time lapse and uh, was just kind of just taking it all in uh, while we were coved out. Dirty Duck did run over 200. It ran a 201, I believe, or 202. There was a pontoon uh, that ran 115. Uh, there's our boys with Iguana and the HCB. That's uh, their really nice boat that's almost $2 million. Saw those boats, saw some big boats, and... We got to see some little rinky dinky boats. It's literally everything at the shootout. And I didn't get to fly my drone in the morning just because just we weren't there long enough. There was a lot of other drones, helicopters flying, and I'm not comfortable flying it when there's a lot of other things in the air. The afternoon I did get to fly it, so you can kind of see what the afternoon looked like. Not quite like a typical shootout, but that's what the weather can do to you. Still an incredible, incredible day last day of the shootout week but they're still racing today and after yesterday we expect a lot of racing so let's go check it out and show you how sunday differs from saturday the last day of the week sunday it's sad but also awesome it's awesome because of things like this dogs on sea dews but it's awesome because it is sparsely attended comparable to saturday every year and this year obviously with 
the the chaos of the weather on Saturday. I'm not sure that Sunday wasn't a little bit uh, higher attended, uh, but maybe that's just because more and more people are realizing Sunday's an awesome day to be out. But you don't have to tie up in a massive line. You can tie up on your own or, or, or anchor up on your own. You get random dudes like that sitting in a boat on a chair don't ask why you also get the kilo races which are a different style of boat racing where you run uh, back and forth you you uh, the boats will run from one end to the other and then back again unlike the drag and then they take the average time we got to see uh, dirty duck actually get their best time so on saturday they actually ran a 199 on sunday they ran a 201 or 202 so that was really cool to see all of the bad boys were out except american ethanol uh, including uh, America One and the Valvoline boat that came all the way from Norway, which you need to see. There's the pontoon uh, that ran 115 miles an hour. Uh, so overall, it was just a, a spectacular day with more random boats, but America One was definitely the highlight. If you haven't heard of America One, it is the boat that is going to give American Ethanol a run for its money. This was really just a test trial run this year. You'll even see it started from a dead stop from the start line, just the way that engine's made. It doesn't, uh, it only has the ability to run for so long. It did still get up to over 170 miles an hour. Uh, so we expect big things next year and possibly records to fall when America One comes back next year. And with that, we say goodbye to Shootout 2024 and just look forward to next year. Hope you enjoyed. What a week. That, my friends, was way more fun to document than it was to edit. That was by far the hardest, longest edit of all the videos you've ever seen on this channel. So if you're watching this right now, I thank you. I hope you enjoyed it because it was a lot of work. And that leads me to an important reminder. These channels don't pay for themselves. I do have a media company, a company that manages social media for companies at the Lake of the Ozarks, companies actually all over the country. Also, I am in the real estate business. I don't sell real estate, but I refer real estate. I create leads for real estate agents and I enjoy creating content for your home, your condo, your piece of property. If you need to sell it, the one thing I'm really good at is getting attention and eyeballs on my content. So let this be a reminder. If you know a business at the Lake of the Ozarks, if you know a business or have a business anywhere in this country and you could use our help to create more attention, get you more eyeballs on your business, uh, manage your social media for you, create content, edit videos for you, you have potentially come to the right place. It's very easy to connect with me. You can DM me on social media or you can text or call me at this number right here or send me an email at this email address right here. Once again, thank you for your loyalty. Thank you for watching and we will see you next week on the next video.